One of the things that most people like about Cebu is its laid-back, very chill vibe. I mean, it's a far cry from the hustle and bustle of Manila, yet it has managed to become one of the country's major business and lifestyle hubs. Definitely, it's this unique combination of a relaxed lifestyle and industrious economy that's probably the reason why Cebu is teeming with world-class designers, great creatives, visual artists, and musicians. Our Cebu adventure continues on today's episode of Modern Living TV. Maayong gabi sa inyong tanan. Let's see of what Cebu has to offer. From living spaces to living life beyond its confines. This is your ultimate guide to modern living. On last week's episode of Modern Living TV, we met the man behind the world-class brand. And today, we are going to learn more about Kenneth Cobonpues' grand vision for Philippine design. And this story begins in his workshop in Cebu, where he mentors the next batch of great Filipino designers. So this is the model that you made. And this was the inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is what I came up with. And then yeah. after a while, I started playing with the shapes. Mm -hmm. He suggested using something solid. So yeah. Um, okay. So this is the, the solid shape. version of this. Yeah. And this is the ones that are made of leather that we yes. cut up. All right. And these are the sketches. I like. Yeah. I, I like this. I think it's very unusual compared to both of these, which I've. It's a form that I've seen a lot, but this is very different. I've always wanted to share and uh, to educate, to train younger designers, and that's always been part of who I am. And that's why I co-founded the industrial design program in the University of uh, the Philippines. And uh, I now teach at La Salle, I'm the chair of the industrial design department. I've never stopped teaching, you know, whether it's in my office or in a institu larger institution, I, I enjoy it. It is perhaps every young designer's dream to work with a renowned master. How does Kenneth choose among the many aspirants who wish to learn the ropes of furniture design under his mentorship? I've taught a lot of students. You know, and what I look for is the ability to, to work, to work hard. And that's really important because with hard work and with determination, you can do anything, even if you don't have the skills. But there's always that hunger for learning, and that's the first thing that I look at. This is made out of thread, right? Yes. And foam. And on this version, you press it. Press. press it like this, so the foam comes up. It's very nice. So this is the seating area here. And this is the open area. Very nice. Right now, I'm still in the process of working out the mechanism yeah. because yeah, that's, I mean, that's the hard part. Yeah, so this is what she's trying to do. So you're trying to do a recliner that opens up and, uh, and it's like two shells coming together, right? One straddling, the other one on the inside. And I think now what you have to do is try to make uh, this model on paper and trying to see that where the pivot point is and trying to make sure it functions. One of the most important things that Kenneth wishes to impart to his students is the need to be original, to develop their own distinct style and discover their own techniques. To be different, you know, and to celebrate in their uniqueness. Oftentimes, students will come and uh, it's very tempting to copy the work that you see on the internet or in books. You know. And I always try to encourage them to do something different, something unique. The Modern Living team sought out one of Kenneth's former interns, product designer Lil Manahan. It was really fun. Like I, I really enjoyed. I enjoyed Cebu a lot. It wasn't as scary as I thought, 
because I mean, usually get intimidated because you know this designer is already internationally known, but he's very down to earth, so it made it very easy to to approach him and to, to ask him questions and to to really work with him. I've only done one lamp with Hive, and that was the float. You really sit down and, and talk, and he asks you why is this a certain way. He usually gives a lot of suggestions on how to refine and, and improve the design. Lil's design aesthetic has always been different from the style that Kenneth is known for, but his influence on her work attitude is what Lil will always remember most about her apprenticeship under the great designer. I really learned a lot about refining my designs, making it really appealing to a bigger crowd. Kenneth is able to help me with that. He's able to help me with aesthetics and proportion. And they can actually stand out amongst other, other pieces. Now in the midst of developing her own line, Lil shares the most important things that she learned during her stint yeah. with Kenneth's designer collective, Hive. Know who you are because that'll reflect on your brand. The second would be to always refine your work, not settle for what you have there, but to always want to find better solutions to the things that you have already made. And the third, be humble and just be rooted in the things that ground you as a designer. What inspired you to do this piece? Um, my inspiration for this is corn. Yeah, corn. Um, some of my drawings here are inspired by this. Yeah. Uh, coral and this one. That's very nice how you took the the things from nature what makes them beautiful and try to abstract it um, in a piece. Overall, Kenneth envisions an even grander future for up-and-coming Filipino designers. I think it's an exciting time for Filipino design. Specifically, it's uh, because of our strong economy. And uh, you see now a lot of designers, more than ever before, going out to different shows. We have now a lot of design schools. You see that there's a renewed interest in design. The next generation's economy is a creative economy. And we Filipinos are the best when it comes yeah. to creativity, when it comes to, to design. You know, um, I was just with uh, a friend who teaches at Columbia University. And one of the professors there in architecture said that in every batch, there's always a Filipino who will top, who will top the class. They always start out in the first year as like just nobody, but at the end of the three or four years, they always come out on top. It is indeed an exciting time for Philippine design and its future can only be brighter. Thanks to designers like Kenneth Cobonpue, who generously shares their knowledge to aspiring designers, all for the love of country and great design.